This is the Memory Palace. I'm Nate Mayo. Dick Christian lived in Charles City, Virginia, where his family had lived in an unbroken chain since their arrival on American shores, nearly a hundred years before America declared independence. As a son of an old family with old money, Dick Christian owned a large farm not far from the Chickahominy River. But at one point, as happens from time to time even to those born to wealth, he fell into debt and thus had to raise money to meet his financial obligations. And so in 1859 there was an auction in which he sold off some of his extra things. Clara Bashup was one of those things, as was her daughter Patience, who was then 12 years old, a bright little girl as her mother would describe her in 1892 to a newspaper reporter for the New York World. A bright little girl. She may have said more when she was interviewed for the story. She may have gone on and on about her daughter. And that was just the quote the reporter chose to use for issues of space or style or clarity. But maybe that was all she said. The phrase that sprang to mind when she thought of patience. The one Clara clung to that somehow conjured whatever memories she still retained those years later of her daughter's face and her voice and her presence, her walk, the feeling of her girl's hair in her fingers, the weight of her in her arms, the smell of the back of her neck, all of the ineffable everything that could never fit into a newspaper quote. This bright little girl was one of the things sold at auction to pay off the debts accrued by Dick Christian. There's another quote in the paper from Clara Bashup in 1892 describing a day in her life in 1859. When we were taken into the marketplace to be sold, she said, I prayed that wherever we might go, we would go together. But Clara was sold first to a man named Ben Davis who traded in slaves, who saw value in Clara Bashup, who figured he could turn her around for a quick profit, and who didn't see the same in patience and so someone else bought her. But when Clara dropped to her knees and begged him, begged this man to buy her daughter too so they wouldn't be separated, at least not this time, he tried. When Clara Bashup recalled that day those 33 years later, it seemed to her that despite the fact that this man had seen this sort of thing play out all the time, had facilitated this sort of thing all the time, Ben Davis, the trader in human beings, was moved this one time by this one mother's agony. And he went to the man who'd bought her daughter to see if he would sell her so she could stay with her mother. But he wouldn't. And so that was the last time Clara Bashup saw her bright little girl. This article is headlined, A 30-Year Search, Mrs. Bashup's Pitiful Quest for Her Daughter, Patience. It wasn't the first time Clara Bashup had turned to the papers for help. Historians have found a handful of ads she placed in the classified sections of different papers around the country. There were likely more. She was one of the many, of the countless now, former slaves who after emancipation and the war and the 13th Amendment, went out looking for family members who had been taken from them. People who spent money they earned, money they were free to keep now that they were free. Spent it putting ads in the paper with the dimmest hopes that their child or their parent or their sibling or their spouse would stumble upon it and find their way back to them. There was a belief, of varying degrees of course, but common and persistent among white people in the slaveholding states and surely among many in places beyond that slaves did not have the intellectual capacity to feel deeply, to love as white folks loved, to grieve, to miss, to experience emotional pain. So the cries of a baby being taken from his mother, the cries of a mother as her baby is sold like a lamb or a sack of flour or a watch fob, didn't mean the same things as the cries of a white child or a white mother. Because if they did, then what did that say about the people who took and sold and bought those mothers and children? Clara Bashup searched for her child for 33 years that we know of. Many of those years were spent just trying to earn enough money to get herself out of Mississippi where she had been sent after being sold and get back to Virginia to try and trace the chain of sales and separations back to her daughter 
But time and the war had erased any memory of the bright young girl, except for those that belonged to her mother. Or any information about the man who purchased her. Or anything useful at all. And so Clara sewed and cooked and cared for other people's bright young girls and saved everything she could so she could keep searching. She went to Kentucky and Tennessee, and deeper south, sifting through the rubble of the post-war world. And she took out ads and paid preachers in black churches to talk about patience, and then tried up north, where she found work in New Jersey, and found a reporter at the New York World who was moved by her story and interviewed her and wrote up his story. There is no follow-up article, and no one has found any other mention of a reunion, and so it is most likely that she never found patience. But there's nothing we can say definitively. Just that Clara Bashup spent 33 years looking for her bright young girl. This episode of The Memory Palace was written and produced by me, Nate DeMeo, with research assistance from Eliza McGraw, and engineering assistance from Elizabeth O'Bear. This show is a proud member of Radiotopia from PRX. We receive our ad music from J.D. Sampson and some ad-serving technology from AdZerk. If you ever want to drop me a line, you can do so at nate at thememorypalace.org or follow me on Twitter and Facebook at The Memory Palace. Hope you're having a good summer. Radio Tokyo.